Welcome back to my channel. Typically, at this point, I would have done another analysis, and I'm currently working on a couple, but for now, I think we all need a break from life. It's been quite interesting. So, today, I would like to read to you Akutaga Oriona's guess, the dog Shido, or just Shido, if you're looking at the Japanese version. So, for some clarification, Shido means white, and Kudo means black. Part 1 It was spring day in the afternoon. A dog Shido sniffling the ground dotted along quiet, narrow streets on both sides, of which were long rows of budding hedges. And here and there, amongst the hedges, cherry was in blossom. Shido, who had been skirting the hedges, happened to turn down a certain by street. As soon as he had turned the corner, he came to a sudden halt as if startled by what he saw. There was a good reason for this. A dog catcher, wearing a figured coat and concealing a net behind him, was stalking a black dog, and the dog, unsuspecting, was eating something that might have been bread thrown to him by this dog catcher. But that alone was not what alarmed Shido. It was enough to see a dog about to be taken unaware. But the important thing was that the dog was his neighbor, Kudo. Indeed, his intimate friend. In the mornings, he and Kudo would frequently put their heads together and sniff at each other's noses. Without hesitation, Shido was about to call loudly, Kudo, take care. But at that moment, the dog catcher cast his eyes at Shido. And there was no mistaking the threat that flashed from those eyes. You would warn him, would you? Beware, or I'll catch you first. Shido was so terrified that he forgot how to bark, and he became cowardly all in a moment. Keeping a close watch on the dog catcher, Shido began to edge backwards. And as soon as the dog catcher was hidden once more by the hedges, Shido forsook the unfortunate Kudo and fled. And just then, the net descended. Kudo's sustained barking rang out, but Shido showed no sign of stopping, let alone of retreating his steps, jumping over mud puddles, kicking and skating pebbles, skimming over the no thoroughfare barricades, knocking over garbage bins, he continued on without backwards glancing. Just watch him running down the hill. Ach! It seems he has been run down by a car. Shido hardly knows whether he is alive or dreaming. Ah, uh, the distressed voice of Kudo still drones over him like a wasp. Kian, Kian, help, Kian, Kian, help. Gasping for breath, Shido at length returned to his master's house. Slipping through the dog gate under the black wall, he ran alongside the small lumber shed till he reached the dog kennel in the back garden. Almost like a gust of wind, Shido ran onto the back lawn. He had reached home. He was not afraid of being caught in a net. Moreover, his mistress and master were playing merrily together on the green grass with a ball. Shido was happy at what he saw. Wagging his tail, he bounded and pranced towards them. Looking up at the two, Shido exclaimed breathlessly, Mistress, master, today I saw a dog catcher. As the young boy and girl did not understand dog language, of course, they only heard wan, wan. But that day, for some reason, they did not even pat him on the head, but rather seemed amazed. Shido, thinking it odd, tried again to tell them. Mistress, don't you know the dog catcher? He's a fearsome fellow, isn't he, master? I escaped, but Kudo, from that door he was caught. At that, the young girl and boy only looked at one another. Then they began to talk strangely. Who's this dog, Hado? Yes, I wonder whose dog it is. Whose dog? This time it was Shido who was surprised. Shido could understand quite clearly his mistress's and master's words. But simply because we cannot understand dog's language, we assume the dogs cannot understand us. How wrong we are, because they can understand our language Dogs can learn tricks, but as we cannot understand dogs' language to see in the dark, 
To follow a scent and to learn generally what dogs might teach us is not ours to know. Whose dog am I? I... I'm Shido, of course, but as before his mistress stared at him strangely. Could he be a brother of Kuro next door? Perhaps he's Kuro's brother, the young boy as he toyed with a bad ponder deeply over the matter. This fellow, too, is jet black. Shido suddenly felt as though the hair on his back was bristling. Jet black? It could not be so. From the time he had been a pup, he had been as white as milk. But to be sure, now, as he looked at his front paws, no, not only at his front paws, but at his chest, his belly, his hind legs, his elegant sweeping tail, all, too, were as black as the bottom of a pan jet black. Jet black, Shido, as though craze, began to leap, frisk, and cavort, all time, all the time, while barking with all his might. Ah, really, Haro, this dog seems quite mad. The girl cowered as she spoke tearfully, but her younger brother stood his ground and promptly struck Shido on the left shoulder with his bat. The next moment, the bat came flying at Shido's head. Evading it, Shido fled as he had done from the dog catcher. But this time he did not, as he had done shortly before, run even two, cho, not even one. Beyond the lawn, under the shade of the lamp palm, there was a cream-painted kennel and when he reached it, he turned about towards his little mistress and master. Mistress, master, I am Shido. However, jet black as I appear to be, I am still Shido. We need hardly mention that Shido's voice shook with sadness and agitation, but neither of the young people were able to discern Shido's feelings. As a matter of fact, the young girl said spitefully, He's still over there barking. He's certainly some cheeky stray, hey? And she stamped her foot. Haru, too. Haru picked up gravel from the pad and hurtled it at Shido with all his might. Beast, you're still hanging about? Take this and this. The gravel came flying without a break. Blood, meanwhile, oozed from beneath Shido's ear. Shido, his tail between his legs, at length, withdrew beyond the black fence. A white butterfly, the dust on its wings bathed silver in the spring sunshine, fluttered gaily by. Ah, from today I shall be a dog without a home. Sighing as he paused beneath the telegraph pole, Shido stared dreamily up at the sky. Part 3 Shunted away by his mistress and master, Shido prowled the streets of Tokyo, but wherever he went, he could not forget that he was jet black. Shido was startled by the barber's shop mirror that reflected customers' faces. He was startled by the street puddles that reflected the sky just after the rain. He was startled by the glass of the display window that reflected the young leaves of the trees on the street. Indeed, even the glasses of black beer filled to the brim on the cafe tables reflected his image. What was to become of him? See that car parked outside the gardens? That big black car? The gleaming enamel on the chassis of the car as he walks alongside it. It is reflecting Shido as clearly as if he were a mirror. Nothing could have been reflected. Nothing could have reflected Shido as effectively as that big car. How astounded he was when he saw his reflection. If you could have seen his face... Shido whined bitterly and swiftly, scampered off into the park. In the park, a light wind was stirring the young leaves of the plane trees. With bowed hair, Shido wandered off among the trees. Apart from the gay pond there, he did not come upon anything that reflected himself. The only sound he heard was that of bees as he clustered among the white roses in the atmosphere of the peaceful garden. Shido was able to, for a time, to forget the besetting misery of having become an ugly black dog. Yet, he knew that such happiness might last but a few moments, as if in a dream Shido wandered over to a bench off the pathway. It was then that he heard the yelping of a dog beyond the bend in the path. Kian, Kian, help! Kian, Kian, help! 
Shido trembled indistinctively. That sound awakened in Shido's heart the remembrance of Kudo's last desperate crying. With eyes closed, Shido could have fled in the direction in which he had come. But on a moment's impulse, Shido let forth a weird howl and turned away abruptly. Kian, Kian, help, Kian, Kian, help. This call echoed in Shido's ears one more. Kian, Kian, you're a coward, you're a coward. As soon as he had turned around, he began to run in the direction of the voice. But when he had run to see what it was all about, it was not a dog catcher who appeared before his eyes. Instead, two or three boys in school uniforms appeared on their way home from school. They were making a great fuss of pulling a brown pup by a rope type tied around his neck. The pup was struggling with all his smite and protest against being pulled and was calling repeatedly for help. But the children paid no attention to his entreaty. Instead, they laughed and shouted and kicked him in the belly. Barking vehemently, Shido flew at the children without the least of hesitation. Taken by surprise, the children were both astounded and frightened. As for Shido, his appearance was ferocious. His eyes were afire, his teeth snapped like choppy knives, as if he were about to bite them. The children scattered and fled in all directions. One of them, in his dilemma, jumped over the flower bed on the edge of the pathway. Shido pursued them for two or three khan, then ran about and returned to the young pup. He raised his voice as if to scold. Sa, come along with me. I'll take you home. Shido immediately ran off into the trees through which he had just come. The brown pup passed merrily under the bench, kicking the roses as he went on and ran after Shido, not wishing to be left behind. The long rope still trailed from his neck. It was two or three hours before Shido and the young pup paused before a modest cafe. Though it was still daytime, a red electric light glowed in the dim interior of the cafe, and a tin pot phonograph was playing something like Naniwa Bushi Resisitev. Complacently wagging his tail, the pup spoke to Shido. This cafe, the Taishu Ken, is where I live. Where do you live, sir? Sir, I... I come from a street a fair way from here, and it was with a big sad sigh that Shido said, Then I'll be off home now. No, wait, sir. Is your master strict? My master? Why would you ask such a thing? If your master's not strict, stay here tonight. My mother will be pleased to thank you with kindness, all for saving me. At my place, we have milk, curried rice, and beefsteak, many kinds of tasty things. Thank you. Thank you. I have no time now, but I'll accept your invitation another time. Then give my regards to your mother. She took a glance at the sky and then went walking off along the pavement. In the sky above the restaurant roof could be seen the crescent moon. Sir, sir, please, if only, the pup whimpered plaintively. Why don't you just tell me your name? My name is Napoleon, but... I'm called but both Napoleon and Napoca. When might you be, sir? My name's Shido. Oh, Shido, is it? That's an odd name for you, sir, isn't it? When you're black all over? Shido's breast grew heavy with emotion. Just the same, I'm called Shido. Then I'll call you Uncle Shido. Uncle Shido, do not fail to come again soon. Well, Napoca, sayonara. Take care of yourself, Uncle Shido. Sayonara, sayonara. Part 4 And after that, what became of Shido? We shall not recount all the details of his story, as it has already been reported in several newspapers, and perhaps everybody has read of it. It is a story of a black dog that helps certain people whose lives were in danger. Also, at one time, there was a popular motion picture called The Valiant Dog based on his experiences, all about Shido. But in case, by some mischance, you are not familiar with his story, you might, not, you might care to read some of the separate articles cited below. Tokyo Nichi Nichi Newspaper On the morning of the 18th, May, at 8.40 p.m., 
as the All Express was approaching the intersection of Tabata Station, Sanehiko, the eldest son of Mr. Shibayama Tetsuda, a company official at number 123 Tabata, was standing on the busy railroad tracks and was in great danger of being run down and killed. A sturdy black dog ran like lightning to the crossing and rescued the four-year-old Sanehiko from the wheels of the onrushing train. The authorities greatly regret that this brave black dog disappeared from sight in the milling crowd, and so they have been unable to render it an official commendation. Tokyo Asahi Newspaper The wife of Mr. Edward Berkeley, a wealthy American, has been simmering in Karuizawa. Recently, a big snake of the seven shaku in length appeared at her villa and attacked her pet Persian cat. A strange black dog suddenly ran to the aid of the cat and after a 20-minute struggle sank its teeth into the big snake and killed it. The heroic dog immediately after the incident was nowhere to be found. The lady is offering $5,000 in reward in search for this dog's whereabouts. Kokumin Newspaper Three first high school students who arrived on the 7th of August at a hot spring resort in Kamikochi had lost their way between Mounts Hotaka and Yarigatake while crossing the Japan Alps. Deprived by gales and rain of their own tent and provisions, the hikers had almost given up hope of survival. Whereupon a black dog, which had appeared from some valley into which the party had wandered, walked on ahead of them as if it wanted to act as a guide. The party followed this dog and after more than a day's walk, at last they managed to arrive at Kamikochi. But the students reported that the dog, once the roofs of the hot spring buildings could not be, not be seen, barked in delight as it disappeared into the bamboo brush. All members of the party assert that the appearance of the dog was God's providence. GG Newspaper On 13th of September, more than 10 persons were burned to death in a fire at Nagoya. In the fire, the mayor of Nagoya, Mr. Yokozeki, almost lost his beloved child. His son, Takemori, three years old, was inadvertently left on the second floor of the burning building and would have been burned to death but for a black dog which brought him out in his mouth. It is reported that the mayor has issued an order forbidding the destroying of stray dogs within the limits of Nagoya municipality. Yomiuri Newspaper About 2 p.m. in the afternoon of the 25th of October, a Siberian wolf, the Miyagi Traveling Zoo, which for several days has drawn crowds of people to the public park inside the Odawara Castle precincts, suddenly broke out of its cage, injured two gatekeepers, and escaped in the direction of Hakone. In view of this, Odawara officials declared a state of emergency and spread a police cordon over the whole town. The wolf appeared in Juji Machi at 4.30, where it fell into a fierce fight with a black dog which eventually overpowered it. The police cordon hastily converged on the spot and the wolf was soon shot dead. This wolf of the lupus gigantix species is said to be one of the fiercest breeds. Now, however, the superintendent of the Miyagi Zoo declares that the wolf was shot without just cause. He is angrily contending that he will take action against the chief of police at Odawara, etc., etc., etc. Part 5 Late one night in autumn, tired in mind and body, Shizu returned to his master's house. His mistress and master had of course long gone to bed. Yes, by that time, not one person would be awake. On the lawn of the Black Garden, the ring of the white moon floated on the tops of the lofty hemp palms. Shido, wet with dew, settled down in front of his old kennel. There he began his soliloquy to his companion, the dreary moon. Oh, moon, oh, moon, I left Kudo to his fate. Probably that is why my body has become jet black. But... In my separation from my mistress and master, I had battled against various hazards. In moments, when I saw my body blacker than suit, feeling of shame for my cowardice had been aroused in me. 
To put an end to this black body of mine, I have jumped into a fire and even fought with a wolf. Yet strangely, whatever the odds in life, my life was not taken. Even death has fled from me when I have looked in it, in its face. At last, full of bitterness, I have decided to take my own life. I feel I should be sad to die if I before I kill myself. Can I have not one last glimpse of my mistress and master? Of course, when they see me tomorrow, they will surely again mistake me for a stray dog. My master might even beat and kill me with his bat, but nothing could be nearer my heart's desire. O oh moon, O oh moon, I ask no other favor than to see the faces of my mistress and master. Tonight I have once more ventured all the way home for that one purpose. Please, as soon as it is dawn, let me meet my mistress and master. His soliloquy at an end, Shido laid his chin on the grass and lapsed into a sound sleep. It's quite astounding, isn't it, Haru? What is, sister? On hearing his master's small voice, Shido opened wide his eyes. There were his mistress and master standing before his kennel, looking at each other with the oddest expressions. Shido cast his eyes down at the lawn. When he had become black, his mistress and master had been just as surprised as they seemed now. In recalling his grief at the time, he even felt sorry that he had returned home. Then, just then, his master suddenly jumped up and shouted in a loud voice, Father! Mother! Shido has come back! Shido! Involuntarily, Shido bounded up. His mistress, perhaps fearing he might run away, held on to him with both arms and hugged Shido tightly around the neck. At that moment, Shido looked into his mistress's eyes, where the kennel was distinctly reflected in her black pupils. The cream-colored kennel, in the shade of the tall, plain tree, everything reflected in her eyes, as it should be. And in front of the kennel, as small as a grain of rice, a dog sat. This was serenity, a repl replendent feeling. Shido was enraptured by the sight of this dog. Look, Shido, look, Shido is crying. Holding Shido in a tight embrace, the sister looked up at her brother's face. Just look at the patronizing brother as he replies, <laughs> Sister, you're crying too. Wow, surprised you made it this far. Or maybe you just skipped to this part of the video. Thanks for joining me in the reading of Shido by Akutagawa Ryonisuke. If you're interested in Akutagawa, I uh, highly, highly recommend my favorite short story, Mandarin's. Um, I've done an analysis video, and that's here in the channel, so you can check that out. In addition to that, I am working on, and hopefully will finish these soon. Been terribly busy. But I want to finish an analysis on Osamu Dazai's No Longer Human in addition to uh, Schoolgirl, which I started um, making some primary points on already. Hopefully I'll get that done soon. If the world doesn't end, I'll try to have that for you if you are interested. If you want me to analyze different Asian literature that you may be interested on, please let me know in the comments and or you can follow me on social media and like it. One more coffee, please. Thank you. Goodbye.